What I have here is the program flow of a simplified version of this problem. So my overall goal here is to be able to generate this spiral. What I've already noticed is first of all we know how big the square is going to be. So I know it's going to be an n by n square where n is the dimension of my spiral. We know that the largest term is n squared and it's always going to be in the corner. And we know that based on the parity of n, i.e. its even or oddness, where it's going to be in this um, square. So from that, what I plan to do is start with this number, or start with this term in the top right, and then from that number and position, generate the row and column necessary to reduce this. And then from that reduced row and column, um, consider what's left over, the 4 by 4 square in this case, and restart the whole process. So after I generate the row and column for 25, I'll end up down here at 16, which I know is even, should be in the bottom left, and then I'll generate the appropriate row and column to reduce this to a 3 by 3 to get in line, all the way until I get to the center. So before I do that though, what I would like to do is first set this problem up a little bit. So choose the dimension of the spiral, which I'll call n. Uh, make an ent empty matrix, which will be zeros, a square of zeros of dimension n by n. Then check the parity of n and then place n squared appropriately. Okay, so that's where we're going to start. I've converted that code diagram or code flowchart to some pseudo code here in the script file, which is going to be where I actually implement all of this. So, as I said, choose dimension of the spiral, allocate space, check the even or oddness, and then based on that, place n squared somewhere. And then from that we'll extend. So choosing dimension of spiral, it's fairly trivial. Start with five. Okay, so I have the first two steps here, and actually this is where I'm going to start my testing. So what I want to do is at this point make sure that even though I only have two lines, they're doing what I expect. So I run this and I would hope to have a five by five matrix of zeros. So I'll go into my workspace, I'll check this. I can see it's dimensions five by five. If I double click it, I'll get a little spreadsheet like editor and I can see that it's correctly initialized with zeros as I want it to be. So the next thing that I want to do is check whether n is even or odd. And I can do that using the rem function, rem, which will return the remainder upon division. And if I check for that remainder after division by 2, if there is a remainder, then it would mean the number was odd because it didn't divide by 2. And if there isn't, then it would mean that the number is even. Okay, so if it's even that I want to put the number in the bottom left, the bottom left number would have a row of n and a column of 1. So to put something in the bottom left, I would say spiral matrix, as I said, row n and column 1, and that should be equal to n squared. Otherwise, if it's odd, I want to put n squared in the top right, which will be in the first row and the last column, or the nth column. Okay, so now I'll check that this is working properly. So I'll start with n equals 5. And I want to make sure my if statement set up correctly, so n equals 5 is an odd number, so I should come to this else block, which I do, and then I should place n squared in the top right position of my spiral matrix and if I hover my mouse over that variable if it's sufficiently small I'll be able to look at the matrix and I can see that 25 is indeed in the top right corner so that's sweet and the next thing I should check is a value of n which is odd so I'll check 6 I'll just run through the same thing again so 6 is an even number so I come into this section of my uh, if statement and I run this line now, which should put uh, 36 in the bottom left position of my matrix, which it does. And spiral matrix is now a 6x6 six six array. So notice, I just want to point out what I'm doing here is I'm only writing little sections of code at a time. So I started with just two lines of actual code, which I immediately tested and checked that they were right. Then I moved on to this next or five lines and I've checked those as well. And I've checked it not just for one, but multiple cases of them to make sure it's doing exactly what I want at this point. This is the general methodology to approach programming. is to start with your pseudocode, and as you implement it, just check everything's working as you go. If I get to the end of this and my program has incorrect behavior, I can eliminate sections of code 
as issues because I know they're working and it can help me find bugs and faults much much quicker. So I'll try to stick with that as I go through. 